Hey everyone, this is Adrian Wonken from Deergo Design and Development, and today I'm going to show you how to do a green screen monitor replacement with obstructed objects using Mocha and After Effects. So the first thing we're going to want to do is open up Mocha once we have our clip, and we're going to hit OK. So go ahead and select your spline tool and we're going to draw out the general shape of what we want to be tracking here. The challenge here is that the right side of the screen is partially obstructed by our foreground element. So in order to create our planner surface, we need to figure out how large the screen is behind my coworker here's head. To do this, we're going to use the markers that are on the green screen itself. You can find a copy of this template on our blog. As I'm creating the third line here using the spline tool, take note that the line created by this tool is actually intersecting through the middle of the tracker marker. And that's going to give me my width of the screen. I'm then going to pull up the grid. And if I run the right side of the spline line, parallel with that grid, that's going to give me the actual width of the screen. And we'll round off those curves there. So now we're going to align the planner surface. And if anything, we want it just a little bit outside of the green. That's going to give us a little bit of playroom, just in case we miss some of that when we actually go to composite it. So we're just going to line up the surface with what we created with the spline tool, and that's going to give us the shape of our screen. Alright, so the next step is that we're going to roto out this foreground element here, aka my coworker Ryan. And by doing this, we're eliminating him from the tracking equation. If we left him in, what would happen is our tracking data would be all skewed by his presence there. So your rotor does not have to be perfect, but it should be decent. We're going to go ahead and just name the layers so we don't get confused. And then we're going to set the blend mode to subtract. That way the program knows that we do not want him to be tracked. And just mess with the edges a little bit. And I'm going to be rotoing this by hand, just by moving the whole mask. Again, it does not have to be perfect. Something like that is just fine. And I'll move the mask again, and we'll let it tween. Now that our foreground element has been rotored out, we can go ahead and track the actual green screen itself. So we'll go ahead and track that. Make sure that before you begin tracking, you actually click Perspective On in the Motion box. My first tracking attempt was not as successful as that I would like it to be. So what I ended up doing was actually making the spline shape smaller, so that it intersected less with the foreground element. My second attempt was much smoother. If you find that you're getting the track that you don't want, or if your mask is moving around, you're going to want to move your points around to a spot that's more consistent, or stays in the frame longer, or has more points that are recognizable by the tracker. Now that we have our data, we're going to go ahead and copy those to the clipboard, and then we're going to bring them into After Effects. With your tracking data in your clipboard, go ahead and take the image or video that you want to have composited and put it below the green screen plate. Go ahead and hit Control V to paste the data, and then we're going to use the key light effect to actually do the keying for us. Go ahead and apply that, and here's your results. Key light does a pretty good job removing the green from the plate but there are a couple things that we'll need to tweak to make this look more realistic. Alright, so to really sell this effect we're going to do a couple things to this key itself. First thing we're going to do is bring back the clip black to get rid of some of the tracking markers. Scrub through just to make sure they don't pop back in. Alright, looks pretty good. 
Now it looks like there's a little bit of bleed right around here where we can see the screen kind of coming through. We're going to take the clip white and get rid of some of that. Bring it to about 80, 85%. All right, there's good, about good. All right, to make things a little bit smoother and to get rid of some of this green, we're going to use the clip rollback effect. And bring that to about 1%, 2%, somewhere in that area. Just to taste. Maybe we'll bump it up a little more. Alright, that looks about good. We're going to take the screen pre-blur just to smooth things out a little bit on the edges of the green screen itself. And then we're going to bring the screen softness up just a little bit. We'll shrink the screen just a little bit so that we get rid of a little more of that green fringing on the foreground there. And just tweak the settings with a key light to your taste and to what your footage is going to require. And we'll go ahead and render this out just to see how things are looking. Alright, that's pretty good. So we're going to do a couple more things to help solve this effect. The first thing we're going to do is duplicate the screen layer. We're going to blur it and we're going to set the transfer mode to add. This is going to simulate the actual screen effect. It's going to be a little bit glowing and we're going to reduce the opacity so it's not blown out completely. And we're going to add a Gaussian blur just to the bottom and just a little bit so that it's not super sharp. There we go. Looks about right. Just dial that down a little more. And blurriness to the taste of the footage that you're trying to achieve. We'll tweak the opacity a little more. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna actually going to add some noise. This is going to emulate the noise of your camera so it doesn't look too much like a picture that you just dropped in there. And just add noise to taste. And we'll render this out and take a look at it. And it's looking pretty good. The last thing we'll do is just bring in a black solid just to fill in any weird opacity bits. And now we have a screen replaced cat. And if you like the tutorial, go ahead and check out deergodev.com slash blog for more filmmaking tips and tricks. Once again, this is Adrian Wong Ken from Deergo Design and Development, and thanks for watching.